Hi boys and girls, it's me, Miss Booksy. I read you guys a few stories with the evil queen, so let's take a look at them now. And soon, I'll be interviewing bad guys like the Big Bad Wolf and evil queens, stepsisters, so subscribe so you don't miss it. Oh, hi, Malice. Hi. So I was here trying my best not to be so bored, even though there was nothing to do but stare into space like this. When I noticed a little white rabbit, this was no ordinary rabbit. He was wearing a suit and glasses and he was talking to himself. It seems like he was late. A talking rabbit who could tell time? This wasn't boring at all. He rushed right past me saying, Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be late, oh dear. Well, this was just too curious. I must follow the white rabbit. He slipped into a rabbit hole. So I did too. Whoa, but this was no ordinary rabbit hole. Ah, wait, I'm not really falling. I'm more like floating, like a feather. Cool. <laughs> wait, where am I? Whoa, did I fall all the way through the earth? Maybe I'm in Australia. <laughs> Good thing they speak English there. <laughs> hmm. A small key. But this key is way too small for any of these doors. Well, what do you know? There's a teensy door. Wow. Too bad this door's so small. I don't even think I could get my head through. And if I could, what good would my head be without the rest of me? <sighs> hey. That wasn't there before. It says, drink me. Hmm, I know I'm not supposed to just drink things willy-nilly. What if it's poison? Or what if it's something just weird, like cauliflower juice? <laughs> hmm, it says here, definitely not poison and most certainly not cauliflower juice. Well, that's odd. Okay, I'll try just a sip. <coughs> Mmm, mm, delicious! It tastes like everything I like. Cherry pie, ice cream, pineapples, roast turkey, French toast, mmm, pancakes, mmm. Oh, hey, hey, what's happening? Uh oh oh, I wonder if I shouldn't have tried that juice! Well, this is totally weird. But hey, now I can go into that garden. Oh no, the key is all the way up there at the table. That's as high as the Empire State Building now. Whoa, oh, there's a giant cookie. Well, if the drink made me smaller, maybe the cookie will make me bigger. Food does make you grow. <laughs> okay, here goes nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Oh, oh, wait, I think. Whoa! Well, this is not what I had in mind. Now I'm so big that I'm stuck. But it's good to know cookies are nutritious. Oh dear, I'm incredibly late. The queen simply will not tolerate this. Oh dear. Please, Mr. Rabbit, I'm stuck. I can't help you now. Didn't you hear me? I'm terribly late. But, but what if I'm stuck up here forever? It's really hot in here and I don't like being a giant. <laughs> Stop crying. You'll get all wet and ruin this new suit. I'm sorry, but this is just really uncomfortable. Ah, well, I'm leaving. Well, that's better at least. Wait, wait a second. I'm shrinking! Woohoo! <laughs> oh, oh no. Well, this isn't good. Oh, luckily, I'm a very good swimmer. <laughs> I took lessons at camp. <laughs> oh, look, there's a friendly looking mouse. Yoohoo! Mousy! <laughs> Mr. Mouse, do you know how to get to the beautiful garden with the Ferris wheel and the merry go round? Come on, follow me! Okay! <laughs> Soon we were joined by all sorts of small animals. A gang of baby ducks, a salamander, two frogs, 
and a hamster named Philip. <laughs> we swam and swam and swam, going right under the door and into the garden and downstream past flowers and crickets, caterpillars and garden gnomes. When we finally got to dry land, I thought we would go play, or at least find a snack. <laughs> but the animals said they had to have an election, but they couldn't decide what they were voting on, and it got quite noisy. Oh look, there's the white rabbit. He was the one who led me down the rabbit hole, so he must know the way out. I chased after him, but I was too small for him to notice me. Oh, if only there was some more growing potion. And poof, just like magic. There was a little bottle right in my path and it had a label on it that said, drink me, Alice. So I took a sip. And I grew! <laughs> what a relief! Oh, I'm me again. Not a great big giant and not a teeny tiny mouse. Oh, speaking of a tiny mouse, all of the small animals saw me suddenly grow larger and boy, did that scare them. They all scattered away, shrieking. Girlzilla! Sorry. Where's that darn rabbit this time? I'm looking for a rabbit. Are you looking for something? I found myself face to face with a giant caterpillar. Wait, did I shrink again? You don't look shrunken to me. But why are you so large? And how did you learn to talk? That's a silly question. Are you silly? I don't think so. Well then, let's hear a poem. Excuse me? I'd like to hear a poem. Poem. One that rhymes, please. Um, okay, well, I never heard of a caterpillar who likes poetry, but here goes. <clears throat> this one is called The Queen of Hearts. The Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts all on a summer's day. The Knave of Hearts, he stole those tarts and took them clean away. The King of Hearts called for the tarts and beat the Knave full sore. The Knave of Hearts brought back the tarts and vowed he'd steal no more. How dare you accuse the Knave of stealing the Queen's tart? Don't you know the Queen will stay off with his head? It's only a made up poem. The Queen of Hearts isn't real. Shh. Of course the Queen is real. And if she hears you say she isn't, She'll say, off with your head. Oh no, but I like my head. It helps me think things, and see things, and smell things. And it has my hair on it. I really like my hair. <laughs> You're a traitor to the queen. Oh, this is a terrible misunderstanding. I, I, I wish I could shrink down so super tiny that I could just escape. Here, eat this. I gobbled up the cookie that he gave me and Oh no! I grew taller and taller and taller and I was very gigantic. Hey, I want to be small so I could just hide from the queen. You made me even bigger! And you've turned rainbow colored, so you're very easy to spot. Oh, you caterpillar! I ought to step on you! That would be a crime and the queen would say... Off with her head! Yeah, yeah, I heard you the first time. Oh, how puzzling all these changes are. I'm never sure what I'm going to be from one minute to another. I've got to get back to looking like myself again, and I must get to that garden and ride the Ferris wheel at least once, and then I definitely, absolutely must get home in time for dinner. Oh, where's that rabbit? Hi kids, Miss Booksy here at Cool School with a new chapter of Alice in Wonderland. Last time we checked in with Alice, she met the stupendous Drupendous in a top secret lair, which is a fancy word for a hidden room. Ooh. <laughs> okay, let's see where she is now in Cool School's very own Alice in Wonderland chapter five. Hey guys, it's me, Alice. After Drew and I got out of the secret lair, Drew disappeared. Like he went on to another dimension or something, probably to do some superhero stuff. Anyway, I'm still trying to find my way out of this rabbit hole. Oh look, there's some nice looking fellows that should be able to help me. They're sleeping. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Hey, wait a second. You're just pretending. We were hoping you would leave us alone. Well, that's rude. Says the girl who interrupted our tea party. Your hair is too long. You should get a haircut. Why, you're rude too. Besides, I like my hair. And that rude little mouse is still pretending to be asleep, even though we've met before. I thought we were friends. Oh no, he really is asleep. Poor little guy's exhausted. Oh dear, now I am the rude one. No worries, have some tea. I guess he's a sleep talker. <laughs> the other two introduce themselves as the March Hare and the Mad Hatter. The March Hare was an odd creature indeed. He would butter a piece of toast and take one bite and say, yuck, too much butter, and then on to the next piece of toast. Same thing, over and over again. And the Mad Hatter, he was even odder. No, that's an udder. I said otter. Sorry. An otter? Where? Not that kind of otter. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Good. Otters are utterly annoying. Why do you keep dipping your watch into your tea? Well, it all goes back to the time I killed time. And then the Mad Hatter told me the most ridiculous story. He had to sing for the queen. He says he sang an old classic, Twinkle Twinkle. Twinkle, twinkle, little bat, how I wonder where you're at. I told him he had the words all wrong, but he insisted he was right, and I was ruining his story. On he went. Up above the world you fly, like a tea tray in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle. Anyway, you get the idea. While well, the queen jumped up and said he was killing the time, and then she yelled, Off with his head! The Mad Hatter managed to escape, head and all. But ever since, time has been paused, stopped, finished, el finito. Yes, my watch stopped at four o'clock, and we've just been here ever since. It's always tea time. I love tea time, but I do wish dinner time would come. At least you don't ever have bedtime. Bedtime is the worst. <laughs> oh, but I do love bedtime stories. <laughs> Those are so cool. I like stories about princesses and dragons and pirates. Oh, and stories about tigers and, and robots and, and romance. Oh, I love a romance. <laughs> and adventure and ninjas and oh, fairies and, and pixies. And oh, of course, a story about a handsome prince. Enough. We don't have time for you to list every kind of story ever told. Rude. Besides, I thought you had a lot of time. Weren't you listening? We have no time. That's very confusing. All I know is that you are a very rude bunny. And you are a very rude hatter, whatever that is. And you, Mr. Mouse, I thought you were supposed to be nice. I am, dear. Quite nice. Lovely to see you. Well, lovely to see you, too. As for the rest of you, I'm going. Perfect. Goodbye. No, bad bye. It's the garden I've been looking for. Woohoo! Hi again. I'm finally in the garden that I've been looking for. Awesome sauce. I should go to the Ferris wheel and get cotton candy. What's that noise? I better hide. Wow, the queen is actually a queen of hearts from a deck of playing cards. I wonder if she likes to play Go Fish. What's that? It smells like a rotten child. Hey, I'm not rotten. I'm really nice. Ask anybody, except the Mad Hatter <laughs> or the March Hare. They don't think I'm really nice. Or the white rabbit, don't ask him. He thinks I stole his cookie and ruined his house. <laughs> you did ruin my house. Off with her head. No way, no, you're not offing with my head. I came here to do two things, ride the Ferris wheel and eat cotton candy. So kindly, your highness, tell me where the Ferris wheel is. She is just a child, dear. Maybe you shouldn't off with her head. <sighs> Well, can you at least play croquet? I sure can. Oh boy, do I wish I hadn't said that. 
The queen's croquet game was totally bananas. The card soldiers had to bend over backwards and frontwards to make the arches to hit the balls through, except the croquet balls were live hedgehogs and no one had any regular mallets. Instead, they used real live pink flamingos. It was the weirdest game ever. But I was too scared not to play, or else she might say, off with Alice's head. Hmm, I'm really sorry, you guys. I promise to be very gentle. Thank you. No problem, Alice. Anyway, so I'm just standing over here waiting for my turn, and guess who I see? Drew Pandas? Rapunzel? Nuh -uh. Crafty Carol? No. Octavia? Keep guessing. Snow no. White? Cheshire Cat? That's right, the Cheshire Cat. Well, sort of, anyway. All I could see was his Cheshire Cat grin. Look, right over there. Hey, Cheshire Cat, is that really you? Yeah, how you doing? Not so great. I thought this garden was gonna be the best place ever, and it's not at all. The queen keeps yelling about offing people's heads, which personally, I don't find very gracious, and I don't like this mean old game of croquet. I don't think it's nice at all to the flamingos, or the hedgehogs, or even the card soldiers. By the way, why are you just a mouth right now? What happened to the rest of you? It's simple. The queen can't say off with my head if I don't have a head. How about that? That better? Much better. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Any idea how we can escape? What is that? Off with this! Off with this! Ah, ah, ah. She couldn't figure out what to say, and she was getting pretty, 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 pretty angry. Quick, Cheshire Cat, how do we get out of here? Yo, Alice, eat this apple. Hey, watch it! Cool! Hey, Queen! Mm. What now? Now we're light enough to just float away. Huh? Whoa! Woo! We got away from that mean old Queen just in the nick of time. And hey! There's the Ferris wheel! <laughs> awesome! Now I just need to get the rest of me back so I can ride it. At least I have a mouth left to eat my cotton candy with. Whew. I'm glad we got away from the queen, but what now? I'm just eyes and a mouth. Don't worry about it. All we gotta do is drink this potion. Wait a minute. Ah, oh, no, I left the potion in my pocket, which was on my pants, which have disappeared. Oh no, what if I'm only a mouth and eyes forever? I'll never get to learn ballet, or run a marathon. We're swimming with the dolphins. What about me over here? Those were my favorite pants. Whoa, Alice, is that you? Yeah, hi, Drew. Wait, Drew, can you draw the rest of us? I think I can. How's that? Awesome, <laughs> thanks. Okay, I don't know what you looked like before. Can you describe yourself? Oh, sure. First, let's see. I was tall, very tall, and strong with big muscles, a very cool mustache, and a suit made out of pure gold. Oh, that's perfect. That is not what you looked like. Come on, why you gotta ruin all my fun? He's actually a purple stripy cat, super furry, with a yellow and orange necktie, <laughs> and a red hat with little flowers sticking out the top. Don't forget my orange cargo pants. Done. There's that potion. Told you I left it in my pocket. Never mind that now. Let's go play! <laughs> Woohoo! Alice, Drew, and the Cheshire Cat went over to the Ferris wheel. They were so excited. Three tickets for the Ferris wheel, please. <laughs> Sorry, kiddo. You must be this tall to ride. I'm sure I was taller before. Or maybe the Ferris wheel was smaller. See, I keep eating these cookies and drinking these potions that make me grow and shrink, and I'm pretty sure the real me is tall enough to ride this ride. Sorry, kid. Move along. Ugh! Oh well, there were more rides, so the three went over to the merry-go-round. Three tickets for the merry-go-round, please. This is a kid's ride. You're way too tall. What? Now I'm too tall? Too tall. Hey, there's a roller coaster over there. Maybe you'll be just the right amount of tall for that one. Let's try it. <laughs> it totally looked like a regular roller coaster, but when they got there, they saw that it was ginormous and that the you must be this tall to ride sign was towering over their heads. I thought this garden was going to be amazing and so much fun, but it's not. 
First, there was that awful game of flamingo hedgehog croquet. Then, the queen wanted to off with my head. And now, all these rides keep changing size. Or am I? I don't even know. And, and I haven't even had one single bite of cotton candy! Aw, cheer up, Alice. Yeah, I don't like it when you're sad. Hey, I have an idea. Here! Yes! My own jet pack! Aw, oh, I always wanted one of these. Now we can fly up to the top of the Ferris wheel. You can see all the sights. Awesome! And we can go around and around in circles just like a merry-go-round. Oh, okay, I'm getting dizzy. And we can go up and down and all around just like a roller coaster. Ah, too fast. That was fun, Drew. Thanks. Yeah, tons of fun. Oh, I'm just glad it's over. No problem, guys. Suddenly, the gang heard a familiar voice. There they are, off with their heads. Oh no, it's the Queen of Hearts. Run! Better yet, let's jet. Alice, Drew, and the Cheshire Cat flew right over the Queen and her army. She did not like that at all. She would have totally offed their heads if she could have reached them. Alice, Drew, and the Cheshire Cat zipped over the Queen's head and into safer territory. Drew quickly sketched a door leading to another garden. He flew through, followed by the Cheshire Cat. But when Alice got to the door, she realized it was too tiny for her. Oh no! I've grown giant again. What's going on? You guys go on ahead. I must find out the cure to all this growing and shrinking. Alice began to walk through the garden looking for an apple or a cookie like the ones she'd eaten before. Oh, there's a plate of tarts. Perfect. These are the queen's tarts. Hands off, you dessert thief. Sorry, I didn't know. All rise. Today, the Honorable Judge, the King of Hearts, will hear the case of the missing tarts. But the tarts are right there. So who stole the tarts? No one. They're right there. It was the knave. The knave of hearts stole the tarts. No, he didn't. Then why did you say he did? I didn't. Don't you remember your poem, Your Honor? <laughs> the evidence. The Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts, all on a summer's day. The Knave of Hearts, he stole those tarts and took them clean away. The King of Hearts called for the tarts and beat the Knave full sore. The Knave of Hearts brought back the tarts and vowed he'd steal no more. And so you see, this giant lady says the Knave of Hearts stole the tarts. Off with his head! No! Please don't off with his head! It was just a made-up poem! Silence in the court! That means you, Alice! But quiet! Or it's off with your head! Hmm, her head is much too large to off. Hey, that's not my fault! Maybe she stole the tarts! What? Me? I'm trying to defend you! She did steal my cookie! Oh dear, this was getting way out of control. Alice didn't steal any tarts. Well, she was going to, but she didn't actually do it. And she never met a knave of hearts before, but she was pretty sure he didn't steal any either. Besides, weren't the tarts right there and not missing at all? Your Honor, we can all see that the tarts are right here, as in not stolen. So why don't we all just forget about this whole thing and move on? <laughs> Who wants to play croquet? It's you! You're the girl from before! You were much smaller then. Exactly! It was she who stole the tarts. Your Honor, White Rabbit, Caterpillar, animals of the jury, you all have seen me before. You know that for whatever reason, I keep changing size. It's not from eating. Well, I did eat that one cookie, and then that other one. But those cookies were magical, or something. I don't know. Will the Mad Hatter please take the stand? Oh, great. This guy again. Kids, as you know, the Mad Hatter and Alice did not exactly get along. The Hatter bowed before the Queen and then began the silliest nonsense Alice had ever seen or heard. There was a girl who stole some tarts, and Alice was her name -o. A L I C E, A L I C E, A L I C E, and Alice was her name -o. He's just making up this song. No fair. The real song is B I N G O, and then she tried to blame the name of Alice was her name O. A L I C E. Enough! I don't like this song. Off with his head! <laughs> <laughs>
Order! Order in the court! The animal jury will decide who is guilty, Alice or the knave. The animals of the jury whispered, barked, meowed, squeaked, and riveted among themselves. Finally, they had their decision. We, the animals of the jury, think it was Alice who ate the tarts. The knave of hearts is as skinny as a card. Nobody ate the tarts. They're right there. Wait, I'm confused. I thought they were stolen. They were stolen, but now they're here. And none are missing? Nope. Well, why are we arguing about this? I wonder why anyone does anything here in Wonderland. It's all so silly. Oh, what did she say about Wonderland? Oh, poo to you. You're nothing but a card. Why don't you go fish? Off with her head! The queen sent her entire pack of cards on the attack. They all came flying at Alice as if someone had shuffled them and thrown them in the air, ninja style. What? Oh, I think I'm back at home. Is this real? Ouch! And I think I'm my right size. Oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> but how did I get back? Was it a dream? No, it couldn't be. But what if I want to go back to Wonderland sometime? It was scary and confusing sometimes, but also kind of fun. <laughs> oh well, time to eat. I'd love a cookie. Or maybe a tart. The parlor was where I studied books and poems and maps. And it's where I would play chess with my two best pals, Kitty and Snowball. Meow. Alice had just called checkmate. That means I'm about to win, Kitty. I'm very sorry, but you just aren't playing very well. Have you been practicing? Meow. Really? <laughs> Every night you practice? I don't believe you. <laughs> and Snowball, you aren't even paying attention. Oh, sure, just play with your yarn. <sighs> Why are you so naughty? I ought to toss you through the looking glass. Meow? What's a looking glass? It's a mirror, silly cat. <laughs> Alice showed her kittens the giant mirror. See, there's another world in there. I think everything is backwards over there, but nobody really knows for sure. No one has ever even gone through. Snowball bopped her ball of yarn and it went rolling through the looking glass. Snowball, go get it. Meow. You kittens are so adorable, but not very good at tricks. <laughs> I guess I'll just have to go get it myself. Whoa, cool, I'm here. <laughs> Look, Snowball, Kitty, I'm through the looking glass. I guess they can't hear me. I suppose I never did hear anything from the other side before. Now where's that yarn? <laughs> it's funny. I would have expected it to look the same over here, but it doesn't. Hey, it's summer here. On the other side, it was winter. There's a chessboard, just like mine. I don't are the know pieces where moving? Where's my kitten? Oh, kitty, where are you? They're talking. Look, the red queen piece is yelling at the white king. You've lost my kitten, you rat. I did no such thing. Oh, she has a kitten too. It must be the tiniest kitten. I should help. Ah, oh, giant, put, put us, us down. down. Shh, I won't hurt you. I wanna help you find your kitten. But Alice didn't realize that because she was so big, her voice sounded quite scary to the little king and queen. What they heard was, I won't hurt ah. you. What? Let go of us. Oh, okay. Ah! Geez, I was only trying to help. They didn't even say thank you. Then Alice saw a great big book. What's this? Yabba da 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 da. Huh? Oh, it's backwards. <laughs> because everything looks backwards in mirrors, I'll just hold it up to the looking glass and then I'll be able to read it. Jabberwocky? What's that? Beware the jabberwock, my son. The jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jub jub bird and the frimmiest bandersnatch. I wonder what a jub jub bird looks like <laughs> and what the heck is a bandersnatch? He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time, the maxim foe he sought. So rested he by the tum tum tree. I bet a tum tum tree has all kinds of yummy things inside <laughs> and growls when it's hungry. 
The Jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the Tolji wood and burbled as he came. One, two, one, two, and through and through the vorpal blade went snicker snack. Mmm, snicker snack. <laughs> and hast thou slain the Jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. Oh, frabjous day, kalu kale. He chortled in his joy. Oh, frabjous day? Who says that? <laughs> Um, I think that was a very good poem, but I'm not sure I understood it. But I am positive I would not like to meet any Jabberwockies. <laughs> Actually, I should definitely, probably go back to my side of the looking glass. No Jabberwockies there. But then again, maybe I should explore a little? It does look like a really nice day outside. Alice started for the stairs and then realized she wasn't walking, but floating down them. Whoa! <laughs> She floated down the stairs and to the door. Okay, this definitely never happened on the other side of the looking glass. Hey, this is kind of like Wonderland. <laughs> I just floated like a feather into this lovely, but giant flower garden. <laughs> and things that don't usually talk and walk are talking and walking. <laughs> I better not eat any weird cookies or follow any rabbits. Or pick any flowers. What? I said, do not pick the flowers. Are you really a flower? Yes, I am, and I prefer not to be picked. Oh, of course, I would never. <laughs> May I ask, how did you learn to talk? How did you learn to talk? I suppose my parents taught me. <laughs> I don't really remember. I was just a baby. <laughs> Can all flowers talk? Yeah, but we usually wait until spoken to. What kind of flower are you? I'm not a flower. <laughs> Your petals are so strange. This is my hair. <laughs> and look, she has two stems. How odd. Alice didn't like being made fun of, so she changed the subject. Do any other plants talk? The tree says bow wow. That's why its branches are called boughs. Oh, you didn't know that? Stop teasing our guest. They know I can't reach them. If I could, I would bop them and pull their petals. Allow me. If you don't be quiet, I'll pick you. Ah! Alice tried to change the subject again to something nicer than daisy pulling. How is it you can all talk so well? I've been in many gardens before, but none of the flowers could talk. Put your hands down and feel the ground. Then you'll know why. Okay. It's very hard, but I don't see what that has to do with anything. In most gardens, they make the flower beds too soft, so the flowers all fall asleep. Oh, I would have never thought of that. <laughs> well, you don't look very smart. I never saw a flower that looked sillier. Enough. I'm sorry, they've never seen anything like you. But that's no excuse to be rude. Definitely not. <laughs> so if they've never seen anything like me, does that mean I'm the only person around here? Well, there is one other thing in the garden that can move around like you. She's very red, like a rose. I think I'll go look for her. Maybe she could show me around. Good luck. Alice said goodbye and began to walk away when she heard a very strange, very tiny sound. What's that? It sounds like it's coming from below my feet. Eek! Don't you see the sign? Keep off the grass? Yeah. Step off, Bigfoot. Oh, I'm sorry. Alice hopped off the grass and onto the stone path. I guess I'll have to be careful around here. Stones don't have feelings, do they? No, you're good. Okay, thanks. I'll just stick to the stones. Bye! Bow wow. Alice walked along the path, looking for the red girl that Tiger Lily had described. There she is! <laughs> Yoo-hoo! Hello! Call me your majesty. I'm sorry, your majesty. Oh, you're the red queen, aren't you? But you were so tiny before. Don't you remember when I held you in my hand? You're talking nonsense, and you should curtsy when you see a queen. Right, um, your majesty, I was wondering if you could tell me how to get up that hill? Come with me. The queen began to run and Alice followed, but soon she realized they were just running in circles. Faster, 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 faster. I'm getting dizzy. Faster, and stop. I've never felt so dizzy and wobbly and whoa. Are you thirsty? Here, have a cookie. Alice took the cookie just to be polite, even though she knew it would only make her thirstier. Better? Mm, I'm still thirsty, but... Hey, 
we're on a hilltop. And look, the land is separated into perfect squares, <laughs> just like a chessboard. I want to play. Just move from square to square. If you get lost, ask a knight for help. And if you see the king, be sure to curtsy. I will. Thanks. <laughs> and just like that, the Red Queen was gone, as if she had been picked up and placed elsewhere. I forgot to ask if she found her kitten. Oh well, time to go play. <laughs> if this is all a big game of chess, I wonder what piece I could be. Hmm, I would like to be a queen, naturally. <laughs> Queens can move anywhere on the board and go farther than any game pieces. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't want to be a pawn. They can only move one step at a time. <sighs> Boring. And they can only go forward. Sometimes you just gotta go side to side, like when you're line dancing or playing tennis. Hmm, I wonder why there are kings and queens in chess, but no princes or princesses. Anyway, let's go see if there's anyone around who can tell me the rules of real life chess. Everything looks the same. Oh, but there's a train. Maybe that's how I get to the next square. All aboard. Ticket, please. I don't have a ticket. Ticket, please. I still don't have one. Just give him your ticket. Um, how about this? I got it from the Red Queen. Thank you, have a nice day. Why are you looking at me through binoculars? Is that better? Mm, I'm still confused. How about now? Have you lost your eyeglasses or something? <laughs> I never had any. I'm a butterfly. And nearly all butterflies are nearly blind. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> a butterfly with eyeglasses. Who ever heard of such a thing? But you have. Never mind. <laughs> Ticket, please. But I already gave you a cookie. Ticket, please. And I told you I don't have a ticket. Well then, you must leave the train. You want me to jump? Go ahead and jump! Use your wings! Easy for you to say, Madam Butterfly. Oh, hmm. To stop train, pull here. Okay. <laughs> Gotta go. Bye. <sighs> Looks like I'm in a new chess square. Okay, where to next? Oh, <laughs> this way to the house of Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Hey, I've heard of them before. They're in a nursery rhyme. <laughs> Oh, hi, Tweedledee. Hi, Tweedledum. <laughs> if you're here for our autographs, don't bother. We don't have a pen. And we don't know how to write. Oh, well, that's all right. I just came to say hello. <laughs> I'm just wandering around this place, and you're the first people I actually know. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> From the nursery rhyme? That's all made-up pretend stuff. It's just silly. Wait, how does it go again? Allow me. <laughs> Tweedledum and Tweedledee agreed to have a battle. Not true. For Tweedledum said Tweedledee had spoiled his nice new rattle. Oh, I never even had a rattle. Just then flew down a monstrous crow, ah! as black as the tar barrel. I've never even seen a crow round these parts. Which frightened both the heroes so, they quite forgot their quarrel. And we don't get frightened, because we are so very brave. Crow! Oh wait, brother, that's just a little butterfly. Phew, we're safe. Good thing you guys are so brave. So you like poems and rhymes, huh? Yes, well, some poems. I didn't really get the one about the Jabberwocky with the Jub-Jub birds and the Frabjous Joy and whatnot. <laughs> and I definitely did not like the one about the Knave of Hearts either. <laughs> Long story. Oh, good idea. I'll read a long poem. Oh, I hope it's not too long. I should probably be going. Shh, Tweedledee, start the poem. Uh, 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 um. This is a really good poem, and Tweedledee is amazing at reciting poetry. What's that, Tweedledum? I said you are amazing at reciting poetry, Tweedledee. Oh, thanks, Tweedledum. No problem, Tweedledee. Action! What? Oh, oh, yes. Finally. Shh. Ladies and gentlemen, Tweedledee and Tweedledum Productions present The Walrus and the Carpenter. The Walrus and the Carpenter. The sun was shining on the sea, shining with all his might. And this was odd because it was the middle of the night. That's right, I do whatever I want. Alice, you be the moon. Okay. Yes. 
It's very rude of the sun to come and spoil my fun. The sea was wet as wet can be. The sands were dry as dry. You could not see a cloud because no cloud was in the sky. No birds were flying overhead. There were no birds to fly. Not even any scary crows. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. Okay, now you guys be the walrus and the carpenter. Okay. <laughs> If all this sand were only cleared away, it would be grand. Oh, oysters, come and walk with us. I do beseech. A pleasant walk, a pleasant talk along the briny beach. Four young oysters hurried up, all eager for the treat. Their coats were brushed, their faces washed, their shoes were clean and neat. And this was odd because, you know, they hadn't any feet. Four other oysters followed them, and yet another four. And thick and fast they came at last, and more, and more, and more. All hopping through the frothy waves, all scrambling to the shore. A loaf of bread is what we chiefly need. Now if you're ready, oysters dear, we begin to feed. But not on us, the oysters cried, turning a little blue. After such kindness, that would be an awful thing to do. Oh no, I just remembered, at the end, the walrus and the carpenter eat all the oysters. <gasps> Poor little oysters. Yes, and it's especially sad because I don't think oysters are very tasty. You're spoiling my poem. Maybe we should change it to be about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Okay. Sounds good to me. Now let's get back to the poem. <laughs> oh, oysters. <gasps> I mean PB and J's. You've had a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? And their answer, there was none. And that was not odd because they'd eaten every one. The end. See, much better that we changed it to peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> hey, I think it's gonna rain. Not under here. Hey, what's this? Why, it's a rattle, just like your nursery rhyme. And it's spoiled. It's just an old rattle, Tweedledum. Get over it. No, it's not old. It was brand new, Tweedledee. And you spoiled it. I thought you said that nurse rhyme about you was all made up. <laughs> prepare to battle, Tweedledee. No, you prepare to battle, Tweedledum. <laughs> I think I know how this ends. <laughs> just like the nursery rhyme. <laughs> it was so nice to meet you, Tweedledum and Tweedledee. I'll just be going now. Okay. We really are brave. Right, I know. <laughs> See ya. Hey, it's the White Queen. Alice, I've been looking everywhere for you. Hi, I'm Gerda. I grew up in a place called Florida. You know, where everything is always happy and fun and super sunny. <laughs> Siggy. Sorry, Gerd. Wally overshot that one. Oops, can't control these things sometimes. Well, that's all right, guys. Who am I to get in the way of some fun in the sun, eh? <laughs> Just don't forget some sunscreen. As you can tell, I had a lot of friends, but no one made me happier than my most special friend of all. <sighs> Kay. <laughs> we did everything together, like fly kites, and build sandcastles, and make flowers. A rose for you, my lady. And go on awesome vacations to Kay's grandma in Alaska. Alaska, here we come! <laughs> hey Kay, what do Alaskans order at a restaurant? Um, I don't know. Ice burgers? <laughs> Get it? Ice burger. Well, I thought it was funny. Burr! Sure is cold out here. Good thing I packed my winter coat. <laughs> what? It's not real. So anyway, Kay and I had a really fun trip in Alaska, but I was ready to go back home to sunshine and happiness. <laughs> That's when things got really, really not happy. There we were, sitting with the snowmen and eating ice cream when suddenly... Ah! Snow bees! Huh, the meanest bees ever! Go get your own ice cream! Well, maybe we can give them just a little. Sharing is caring, eh? Oh. Okay, but no more than one lick each. Ow, ow, eat. that hurts, ow. Stop, stop, me no snow bees. Oh, stop right there. But it was too late. The snow bees had already stung Kay like a hundred times. Not to mention finish all his ice cream. We'll not let some snow bees ruin our vacation. Right, Kay? Right? Hmm. Huh. Mm, okay, I guess I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> That's a, that's a funny joke, okay? <laughs> no, but seriously. I've had enough of your happiness, okay? Leave me alone. But I, I, I don't understand. I thought we were BFFs forever. You gave me a rose. I hate roses. Okay, 
You're probably just in pain from all those snow bee stings. Not to worry, I know just the trick. <laughs> Nothing like a good reindeer sled ride to get you out of the blues. No, I hate reindeer. I hate sleds. I hate everything. Okay, I get it. It was my fault you got stung, but we were besties. <laughs> Guess I better get going. Sunshine State, here I come. I totally thought Kay would come after me, but he didn't. I was so angry at Alaska, I vowed never to come back again. They're back! Wahoo! Did you get me that snow globe I asked for? Uh-oh! How was I gonna tell them what happened? Uh, hi guys! So, funny story, Kay's actually not here. I thought you went with Kay to his grandma. I mean, if you wanted some time away from us, you could've just said so. What happened was, we were eating ice cream next to a snowman when a bunch of super mean snow bees totally attacked us and stung Kay like a zillion times. And he got really mad at me for letting him get stung. So he ordered me to leave him alone in Alaska. I can't believe I totally ruined everything. That boy is always happy and kind. Not to mention, he's got stars in his eyes whenever he sees you. Are you sure that was what happened? Yes, I'm sure, except... Except what? Except those snow bees sure look strange. They were all blue and icy and mean. Maybe they transferred their meanness. So that's what made Kay not so happy. Oh my, poor Kay. I'll get to the bottom of this if it's the last thing I do. Yeah, yeah, I know I said I'd never go back, but this was for Kay. Hit it, back to Alaska. I was determined to find Kay and bring back his happiness. Oh, we got this, guys. Uh, just a little farther. There! Hold up! That's where we had our ice cream, just beside that snowman. Kay? Kay? It looks like we're too late. Hmm, if only the snowman could talk. I bet he'd know where Kay went. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. What's that, Mr. Snow? Mm-mm-mm. Suddenly, I had an idea. Ah, uh, finally, something other than that carrot nose. You know, I can't even smell out of that thing. Yeah, okay, okay, now please, Mr. Snow, can you tell me if you've seen a dude, yay hi, leave from this spot? Why, yes, yes I did. What a brave young man, headed right down to the River of Doom. River of Doom? Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Did I say doom? I mean flume. Like where kids go on log flume rides in the summer. It's right over there. Phew. <laughs> so there was still hope I could catch up with Kay at the river. If only I could get through all this snow. Don't move, Kay. On my way. Oh, this must be it. Kay? Okay. Are you there? Can you hear me? I sure can. Would you keep it down? Sorry, um, did you happen to see a guy, yay hi, come through here? Sure, I saw him. You did? Oh great, do you know where he went? He was standing right by the frozen ice water. Coulda left, coulda fallen in. Fallen in? Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Relax girl, I need a quick rinse anyway. Nope, all clear, guess he left. Oh, thank goodness. Do you have any idea where he may have gone? There's a rose garden not too far off. Kinda nice if you like roses. That's it! Kay loves roses. I was positive I'd find him there and we could finally leave this cold, scary place. Kay? Kay, where are you? Kay? Suddenly, I heard a voice. Who goes there? Uh, Kay? Is that you? No, it's me! But I still didn't see anyone. Me? Me who? Me, the tree! Hello! Ah! You can talk! Uh, I can even bark! <laughs> Get it? A little tree humor. I was just looking for my friend Kay. Yay, hi. Pretty cute if you ask me. Have you seen him? I have not, but... But? The scarecrow would know. Hey, Scary, did you see any guys come through here? Totally. He was heading towards the evil Snow Queen's palace. Shame. Seemed like a nice dude. The evil Snow Queen? Yeah, coldest lady in all of Alaska. <laughs> Phew.
feel that chill? That's her, all right. Well, she is not gonna lay one icy finger on my friend. Sorry to interrupt. We were just looking for a young girl wearing a blue dress. Usually travels with a small pup named Toto. Hey, you look awfully familiar. Have we met? Uh, I don't believe so. I've got one of those faces, I guess. <laughs> now, if you don't mind, we were just finishing up a conversation- How about a yellow brick road? Have you seen one of those? I'm gonna let you guys hash this out. Scary, if you could just tell me which way to the palace, I'll be on my way. Straight ahead, lady. But be careful. Real dark and scary in those parts. Well, nothing's gonna stop me. I'm coming for you, Kay. Oh, and bye, guys. Good luck finding that blue dress girl and brick road. Gerda marched through the icy forest on her search for Kay. Then she remembered a safety rule her scout leader had taught her. When in doubt, shout. <laughs> Kay? Kay, where are you? Kay? Who are you? Who are you? I was taking a nap and you woke me up. So I'll ask the questions. Who are you? I'm Gerda P. Hobsworth, Girl Scout Ambassador and President of my school's Botany Club. Very impressive. I'm Lady Shannon Von Sol, Sorceress of Eternal Summer. It doesn't look or feel like Eternal Summer around here. Oh, well, not here, obviously. Come see. Sorry about all that shouting. I'm looking for my friend Kay. Word on the street is he went towards the Snow Queen's palace. Oh, she's a brat. Maybe even evil. Here we are. Still not getting any summer vibes. <laughs> Awesome! It's like paradise in here! It looks just like Florida. That's where I'm from. <laughs> it's always like summer there. Wonderful! Then you'll feel right at home here. Well, I can't stay. I have to go find Kay. But maybe we'll stop by on our way home? Oh, just stay for a bit. I have popsicles. Hmm, I love popsicles, but no thank you. I really have to go. Suit yourself. Oh, okay, so how do I get out? Gerda looked around but couldn't see the door anywhere. She hadn't been there long. How could she have already gotten lost? Everywhere I look, there's just more palm trees. They're everywhere. Oh, where did that sorceress lady go? Owie! Oh, darn coconut. Oh, oh, actually, now that I'm sitting, I realize I'm pretty tired. Ooh, uh, you know, I think I'll just take sleep a little and just, uh, then I'll go find Kay. Gerda drifted off to sleep and found herself in a crazy dream. She had found Kay, except he was different. He was a prince. Wow, hey Kay. But Kay ignored her. Kay, I came to rescue you. Suddenly a beautiful woman appeared. She was dressed head to toe in white silk and sparkly crystals. Wow, you're really shiny. <laughs> she bent to give Gerda a kiss on the top of her head. Wow, just like my grandma does. But when the woman in white kissed her, Gerda's hair turned to ice. Okay, not like my grandma. Then Gerda realized she was becoming completely frozen. Kay, help! But Kay looked on as if he didn't even hear her. Kay! <gasps> Scary, I hope Kay hasn't become frozen. Okay, I had my nap. Now I gotta go. But Gerda realized she still didn't know the way out of eternal summer. Where is Lady Shannon Von Sol? Hello? Hello, lady. It's like she tried to trap me in here. Wait a second. Doesn't sorceress really just mean witch? Oh no, she's a witch. Not necessarily. Oh? Sorcery is just magic. So technically there could be a nice sorceress. Oh, okay. But she isn't! Lady Shannon Von Sol isn't nice? She won't let me leave. I'm a prisoner. At night, I sleep in a cage. Well, it's really cold outside. I don't think a toucan can survive out there. I bet a toucan can too survive out there. Just wait till she puts you in a cage. Why would she want to put me in a cage? She's obsessed with summer and sunshine. You're from Florida, so you're like the most summery, sunshiny creature she's ever seen. Trust me, you gotta get out of here. Okay, well, how about this? You show me the door, and I'll smuggle you out with me. Deal! So Gerda followed the toucan through the eternal summer paradise, past all the palm trees and coconuts. Here it is! Let's bust out! Do you have a coat? Do I have a coat? I'm a bird! What do you think? 
so sassy. Oh, I have an idea. Fly in here. And where do you think you're going? Gerda, Toucan, and the reindeer had traveled all day through snow and ice and still no sign of Glacier. We've been walking forever. Doesn't this thing go any faster? Why don't you fly? <laughs> My wings got tired. Hey, reindeer, can you talk? Hello? Hmm? Oh, yes. But my name isn't Reindeer, it's Clyde. Oh, hi Clyde. Pleased to be officially introduced. <laughs> Clyde, are you sure we're going the right way? Yes, I'm sure. Uh, at least I think I'm sure. You think you're sure? He spent the last couple years in captivity. Give him a break, Toucan. Why don't you fly up and check out the bird's eye view? Great idea, Clyde. Toucan, can you do that? I liked it better when you didn't talk. So, Clyde, tell me about Glacier. Oh, it's the most beautiful place in the world. Have you been to Florida, though? I think that's the most beautiful place. Not really my scene, but I have some cousins who go there every year for Christmas. Christmas. Wait a second. Do you know Santa's reindeer? Yeah, Donner and Blitzen and I go way back. Oh, <laughs> so can you fly or what? Good question. I never tried. What? I know for a fact that humans can't fly, and that didn't stop me from trying. I'm fly! Ow. That's how I broke my arm. See? You can still see the scar. <laughs> wow. I know. So anyways, you should totally try to fly. Okay, maybe you should hop off first. Good thinking. Okay, just run really fast and then leap. Sorry, totally my bad on that one. What happened here? I tried to fly. Oh boy, stick to what you know, Clyde. I think maybe Santa's reindeer eats some magic oats or something like that. <laughs> or maybe it's like Peter Pan and you gotta think happy thoughts. Or maybe you just gotta believe in yourself. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, you see anything up there, Toucan? Yeah, I saw a palace just outside the forest. That way. Great, let's go, gang. When Gerda and her friends stepped out of the woods, they stopped, stunned. The palace was huge and sparkly, as if it were covered in a million diamonds. Trees were covered in shimmering icicles, and ice sculptures of animals dotted the land for as far as the eye could see. These are amazing. They look so real. Told you this place was pretty. It is, but we have work to do, people. Or, uh, animals. <laughs> Let's go find Kay. Kay? Hello? Are you there, Kay? Kay! And suddenly, there he was in the distance, Kay in the flesh. Kay, it's really you. Wait, what is he doing? Kay, it's me, Gerda, your best friend. Stop it. Why is your friend trying to shoot us with frozen arrows? Yeah, that's not very friendly. Guys, that's not Kay. I mean, it is, but he's not himself. He must be under the Snow Queen's spell or something. We have to save him. Wait, I think I might know how to break the spell. You do? There's an old story about the Snow Queen that I heard as a youngster. Yeah? And I don't know if it's true or just one of those myths. Yeah? But legend has it that to break the Snow Queen's spell over someone... Spit it out, Clyde! You have to give them a kiss. A kiss? No way! Not you, Toucan. Gerda. Oh, right. Problem. Kay is, um, trying to shoot me with arrows, so how would I get close enough to even give him a kiss? I think we'll just have to run as fast as we can and dodge the arrows. We? Gerda helped both of us to freedom we owe her. Yeah, you're right. We got you, Gerda. Thanks. You guys ready? Woohoo! Yeah. Let's go! Hello. Snow Queen! That's right, kids. The Snow Queen! The Snow Queen was beautiful. In fact, she looked just like Gerda had dreamed, shimmering from head to toe. She certainly didn't look evil. You're the most sparkly lady I ever saw. Thank you. May I give you a little kiss? The Snow Queen leaned in and was just about to give Toucan a little peck on the head when Gerda remembered her dream. No, Toucan! That's how she... Freezes you! Oh, did I do that? Silly me! Wait, 
Are all these ice sculptures real animals? Of course. Aren't they lovely? You are evil, and I know you took my friend Kay, but we're here to save him. Save him? But Kay loves it here. Impossible. You're an evil queen, and you brainwashed him. I'll show you. Kay, come here. Yes, my queen. Kay, would you tell this girl that you're happy here? Kay, no! You like the beach and the sun and hanging out with me, don't you remember? I'm very happy here. See, he's the snow prince. And you can be the snow princess if you like. No way! Then you can be my prisoner. Hey! Gerda! You want some too, reindeer? It's Clyde. Come on, Snow Prince. Let's go. Well, I guess being free for a day was pretty cool. Don't talk like that, Clyde. We're gonna bust out. You'll be free again. We'll save the toucan, and I'll rescue Kay. You'll see. But how, Gerda? Did I mention I was a Girl Scout? I don't even know what that means. It means that I can save us. Oh, cool. Wait, I don't get it. What does that do? Conjure up some kind of magic? Pretty much. Fire melts ice. It's kind of like magic. Let's go. Safety first. Gerda and Clyde found Kay alone, shivering and looking miserable. He was almost blue from the cold. Kay? Do the kiss thing. Don't rush me. This is a big step in our relationship. How's my breath? <gasps> You're just saving his life, remember? Not getting married. Yeah, yeah. Gerda? Kay! Oh, you're back! What happened? You were captured by the evil Snow Queen. She froze your heart, but I saved you. Really? How? Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> you got a little something on your face there. Yoo-hoo! Snow Prince, where are you? Ah, Snow Queen, let's go! Wait, we gotta get Toucan! What happened? You got frozen! But don't worry, we're going home. Florida, baby! Woohoo! Wait, did you save me with a kiss, too? Don't worry about it. Ooh! Kay and Gerda sitting in a tree! K I S S I N G! Hush up, Toucan! We gotta go save the rest of these animals. Thank you. Thank you. Now we can go. Guys, hop on. One, two, three, blast off. Whoa, you're doing it, Clyde. You're flying. How about that? I am. I knew you could. Good timing, by the way. Snow Prince. Where are you going? Get back here! No way! Yeah, see you never! Kay and Gerda were so happy to be home again, back in warm, sunny Florida, far, far away from the frozen land of the evil Snow Queen. Clyde stayed for a quick visit, swam in the ocean, had some ice cream, but he got homesick and returned to the north. Toucan, on the other hand, was right at home. So, what do you guys want to do next? Build a sand castle? Go to Disney World, go windsurfing, maybe some alligator wrestling. Yay! I'm so glad there was a happy ending. Kids, tell me what story you want me to read next. Rapunzel, maybe? <gasps> tell me in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a story here at Cool School. 